One of the most common reasons an analysis is flawed or wrong is people mistake correlation for causation. Correlation is not causation, except sometimes it is. Watch this video to learn how to tell when correlation is causation and how to avoid mistakes when it isn't. This is the second video in my Statistics Lies series about how bad math and analyses can lead people astray and cause them to make poor decisions. If we haven't met before, I'm E.W. Hilbert, the analytics dude, and I put out content like this to help people learn the analytical skills and techniques they need to make a difference in their lives and business. Make sure to subscribe if that's the sort of thing that interests you. Saying A and B are correlated simply means that knowing the value of A gives you information about the value of B. It doesn't mean that bigger A's cause bigger B's, just that bigger A's and bigger B's tend to happen together. Causation, on the other hand, means that A causes B. They don't simply happen together, a bigger A makes a bigger B happen. A popular anecdote is that ice cream consumption and shark attacks are correlated. Now, eating ice cream doesn't cause shark attacks, they just both happen more in the summer. Being in the movie Sharknado, on the other hand, causes shark attacks. The entire point of the movie is creating absurd situations for sharks to attack people in city streets. Why am I talking about Sharknado? Anyways, now most of the time, correlation and causation are mixed up, it's obvious. But, there are plenty of times we have two things that are correlated and people can tell a story about why they're related and then the next thing you know we have measles outbreaks because people stop vaccinating their kids. That's right, some people think that vaccines cause autism and it's not just because Jenny McCarthy says so. There's an actual correlation between vaccine amounts and the incidence of autism in children. This graph here is real, it's commonly cited and it's not fake data. And it's also not evidence of causation. There are lots of things that might cause an increase in the incidence of autism. Aging parents, time on screens, environmental toxins, eating organic food. Yep, you caught that? I said eating organic food. Turns out there's an even tighter correlation between the incidence of autism and organic food consumption. Does that mean that there's a causative relationship? No, of course not. They're just two things that happen to be increasing around the same time. You can establish causation with a controlled experiment. Properly designed experiments are the best way to establish causation. Full stop. Unfortunately, it's not always possible or practical. If you can't set up a controlled experiment, that doesn't mean that there isn't anything you can do. There are other ways of establishing causality using analysis of existing data. The United States Surgeon General has set up guidelines for establishing causality on epidemiological research that's broadly applicable to other types of data analysis. They are, first, strong relationship. Is it a large predictor or a minimal one? Second, strong research design. This seems obvious, but you'd be surprised. Not to pick on the whole vaccines thing again, but the original Andrew Wakefield study, in addition to having fake data, has a sample size of 12. It's not even a full kindergarten classroom, let alone a large enough sample size to base broadly applicable healthcare policy on. The third is a temporal relationship. The cause must precede the effect. Otherwise, it's probably just an associated relationship, not a causal one. And fourth is a dose-response relationship. If I want to say increasing A increases B, as I continue increasing A, B needs to continue increasing as well. And fifth is reversible association. If you reduce the cause, does the incidence of the effect also go down? This is an area where the vaccine research also falls apart. Any of the studies that have been done show that non-vaccinated kids get autism at the same or even higher rates than vaccinated ones do. Sixth is consistency. When other people look at the same relationship, do they find more or less the same effect? And seventh is plausibility. Is there a story behind how the two are related? Now, there's always going to be causes and effects that you can't precisely explain. But if you have no idea why A could be causing B, it's far more likely to be coincidental than it is causative. Take this example, for instance. Spending on science and technology, and suicides by strangulation or hanging. There's no plausible reason how these two could possibly be causative. So this is a spurious correlation. And eighth and finally is coherence with known facts. If you have a great model, but it needs to disregard certain assumptions about things we know to be true, like the sky is blue, it's 
probably not that great of a model. So the next time you see things are correlated, remember, the correlation is not necessarily causation. It could be, you just need to know a lot more about the situation. Follow these guidelines and you'll avoid mistakes like thinking people in Maine figuring out how to work out their relationship is causing the rest of us to eat less margarine. If you got something from this video, please hit like. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe. If you have questions or comments, leave them below and I promise I'll get to you. If you want to see more spurious correlations like the suicides and margarine one, check out tylervigan.com. He's got dozens of examples like that. And as always, I'm E.W. Holbert, the analytics dude. And until next time, thanks for watching.